and welcome back to a very long overdue video that I haven't made a video in about two weeks. The last video that I put out was the Scotland Will Be Waiting video which I was really proud of. Um, it's a compilation of different parts of drone footage that we've collected over the last year and a half um, all over Scotland and I was really really proud of it and it made me cry a little bit so, <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that as well. But today I'm doing what a lot of landscape photographers are doing and I'm out in the woods. This is really the first time I've been out since I went to B Craig's Country Park. Um, obviously I've done my exercise and stuff but it's not really been the weather to take the camera out so I haven't really done any sort of landscape photography at all in the last six weeks or so so I've really missed it so what I'm doing today is as I said I'm out in the woods this is a new woodland that I found um, and it's not far from where I live so I'm quite excited just to explore it and find out what it has so there's a dragonfly right above my head come here land on my hand that'd be awesome no okay so this place is full of dragonflies and forget-me-nots and uh, mossy branches I'm really excited to sort of find out what else it has so today with me I have the 100mm macro lens 2.8, it's a beauty, I'm excited to go and try it but it's just started raining so I have it on good authority that rain's actually the best kind of weather to shoot in if you're doing macro photography especially if you're doing bugs um, I've come out at sunset, believe it or not, um, it was gorgeous today but it seems to have clouded over a little bit which is okay because it gives you that sort of softer look to your photos what I was hoping for was high clip photos and I don't think I'm going to get that today but we're going to press on with the walk. I'm not sure how much left of it I have. I've already done quite a lot of sort of slow-mo footage as you've just seen. Yeah, I want to go and explore and find some bugs. So let's go do that. So there's a nature reserve right next to where I live and it is there's an abundance of flowers and all different types of wildlife and um, there's breeding um, wildlife there just now and it's obviously it's a conservation area so there's tons and tons of variety of stuff that you can find down there. This was lovely, obviously the railway walkway that I'm on just now actually was more fruitful for um, macro photography because you've got spiders and, and sort of cool little sort of hoverflies as you just saw. So I think it depends on what sort of macro photography you're looking to do. Obviously I went through the woods and it was a bit fruitless up until the very last minute. Um, it didn't really rain too heavily to create any sort of droplets on the leaves or anything like that. So I think tomorrow is to be sunshine. So I'm going to try that sort of style of photography and see how I got on. switch to the road mic again which even though it's directional isn't the best so um, if it's really windy which it is today <laughs> and you can hear that I apologize but there's nothing I can do about it and um, so I'm on the market for a new lapel mic if you know of any really good ones let me know this is a, the nature reserve very close to where I live it's literally a you could see it from my back window pretty much it's absolutely gorgeous as you can see behind me the fields are full of cotton it's absolutely beautiful it's technically it's peat fields actually behind me um, I have noticed that people have been digging it up, which I'm not so happy about, but, but it's still a beautiful place to come. So, so far I've come the forest walk to have a look and I managed to find a ladybird, which was cool, but it wasn't your typical red and black one, it was brown and white, and I've never seen one before, so I managed to get a shot of that. The one thing I have noticed about macro photography as opposed to landscape photography, well they're kind of the same thing, but kind of fall under each other, is that it's really windy today. 
and that makes it really difficult from a research obviously it's better to come out at sunrise and sunset and that's usually because the wind is at its lowest and I can see why that makes a difference because I'm actually having to hold branches in place apparently as well at sunrise and sunset the bugs and the insects are actually less active at that time of the day so just now it's probably about 12 o'clock this boardwalk up here is incredibly busy now so I'm trying to kind of stay away from it I'm going to go through the next forest path now which I'm not going to go through the main path. I'm going to go off the beaten track and see what I can find down there. But I'm excited because over there I've got some beautiful dappled lights, but there's no way to know until we get there. So let's go. So I managed to find this absolutely fantastic moss on the ground level. I've come off the beaten track away from the main track, um, which I'm quite glad about because it's very, very busy today as you'd expect. This moss actually has a sort of spiky quality to it so it's really really interesting to look at for macro photography. I haven't found any bugs on it yet though which I'm quite disappointed about but um, but itself looking at it through the lens, through this lens, is absolutely gorgeous. I'm actually shooting on manual focus for these kind of photos. In fact I haven't used autofocus at all. I do have the stabilizer switched on and I'm shooting at the one to one ratio on the lens for all shots and literally what I've been finding is once I've got my, my subject and I can find it through the, oh, it's really difficult to find them but once I've got it through the, the lens and I've focused on it it's a case of kind of rocking back and forward with your camera to try and get it perfectly in focus and it's definitely one of the most challenging technical types of photography I think I've tried this is very very technical but it's really good fun so we're going to continue through the walk and see what else we can find I'm really hoping to find more bugs though a couple of really cool like, sort of gold coloured flies I haven't really found anything in there not bugs anyway I was really looking for bugs so I'm going to try my own garden which I have to go back and get some lunch because I'm needing fed so I know for a fact I have at least five or six different species of plants which have flowered at the moment hopefully we might get some butterflies and moths and all sorts of stuff so so we're going to go back to the garden have a look at some plants and some flowers and see what we can find on them and I need fed because I'm starving so let's go do that so we're back at the house now and I've already to be out for a wee bit of an explore just to sort of preempt what I was going to talk to you about before I switched the camera back on and I'm really really glad that I did because apparently my garden is full of hidden surprises. The macro world is definitely completely different to what I expected it to be. I've done macro before but it was household objects so it's a completely different ballgame you're talking about actual organic things. Also what I have in my garden is a forest flame which is currently going from yellow back to red again. I have uh, Asiatic lilies, I have acers and I have azaleas lots of Japanese varieties in the gardens. Most of the colours are out and it's absolutely gorgeous. The azalea's dying back a little bit but I'm going to take you out and show you them just now. So just before we go outside, word of warning, my garden is like a bit of a construction site at the moment. So I'm getting stones put down at some point, they were supposed to be here a week ago so they've been delayed. So I'm getting Glaswegian pebbles and I'm not even joking about that but they're not down yet so the garden's just got tarpaulin everywhere so it's a bit of a mess. So let's go and have a look. One of the last things I found was actually this tiny, tiny, tiny little spider in this web. He's about that size in reality um, and I hate spiders so for me to get this close to a spider he has to be that size. <laughs> um, but he's really really cool and as obviously as you, as you see in the B-roll he's a really cool spider. He's got sort of loads of different colours in his back and stuff as well um, and he's quite happily sitting right in the centre of his web so he's very photogenic <laughs> as well. So I got him, I actually shot him from the back and I shot him straight on but I actually preferred the straight on shot because you got all the vibrant colours behind them which gives them that sort of red yellow background as well. So this is my rhododendron. I bought this in B&M's for 99 pence and it was that size. <laughs> and then it's giant, it's taken over. I had to actually dig it up because it was taking over the garden. Inside the flower there's a sort of silver pollen, it's absolutely gorgeous. So that came out really really nice. There's also some ridges on the petals as well so I managed to sort of focus stack them so that you can see them better as well. So this is my pond, no I'm only kidding. This is the, what's left over from the raid that we had. Um, so this is also going to get tossed. But inside this, life has already started to, to sort of make itself at home. 
and um, we have quite a few dead bugs and we also have quite a few spiders living on those leaves. There's also some wispies off of dandelions which have landed in here and they look really really cool underwater. So I photographed them as well and they've got that sort of icy look about them in macro form, it's really cool. So I also photographed that and that is a strawberry plant which is just starting to flower. So this is my hosta plant and I cheated with this one and I put some water on it to try and get some droplets. Um, the thing about this is the sun is hitting it straight on, you can see my face. It's hitting it straight on so it's very very contrasty but what I like about that is it's bringing out all the different lines in the leaves and in macro format that looks absolutely fantastic especially with these water droplets. So last but not least these are my Asiatic lilies and for this particular shot which I'm just about to show you just now it was uh, these buds here that I was photographing and as you can see at the top of them they've actually got sort of like a purple hue at the top of the buds. I'm not sure why because they come out red when they're blooming so I'm not sure why it's purple but I put some water on them as well to sort of add a couple of droplets but mostly just to saturate them and to bring out that depth and the colour in them. So under the scope of a macro lens that looks absolutely phenomenal and it kind of has that sort of bug eyes look about it. I was hoping to find some massive massive bugs and beasties but apparently there's none in my garden apart from that one spider <laughs> and me. Yeah. And there's no snails out just now and there's no slugs because it's a nice hot day. I did photograph my cat earlier. I've got some cat fur. So just to wrap up this video, I think I've been on for long enough. Um, I hope you've enjoyed all the sort of macro video that I've, I've managed to produce, which I was not expecting to do, but it looks really cool. So I've included it in the video. The whole sort of experience has definitely taught me that macro photography is a lot harder than it looks. It's whether it doesn't matter what level of photography you're at, it's very, very difficult. I think some of the people who also have those really awesome photos of bugs with their big eyes and their hair and stuff like that, they're obviously quite big bugs that they're, they're photographing because all the ones that I found today have been quite small and very difficult to see <laughs> and very difficult to focus on as well. Even with that sort of rocking in and out motion you're not really getting the detail that I was expecting so even using a tripod as well which I have done today as well. It has definitely taught me that you need to kind of slow down. You can't treat macro photography the same way you would treat normal landscape photography. You have to slow down, you have to be more aware of your surroundings, you have to be more aware of where the bugs and stuff might be hiding to go and find them. So it's definitely taught me a lot I have enjoyed it very much and I probably would do it again in the rain just to see what dif just to see what difference that would make to the shots as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you enjoyed this video then like and subscribe and until next time I'll see you soon. Bye!